Do you want me to talk? No, just stand there.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here today to update you on the ongoing police investigation into the incident in Amesbury and Salisbury. As you are all now sadly aware, we have launched a murder investigation after learning the devastating news that Dawn Sturgis died in hospital last night at 26 minutes past eight. It is both shocking and utterly appalling that a British citizen has died having been exposed to a Novichok nerve agent. But make no mistake, we are determined to find out how Dawn and her partner, Charlie, Charlie Rowley, came into contact with such a deadly substance. And we will do everything we possibly can to bring those responsible to justice. 
Our immediate thoughts and prayers are with Dawn's family as they come to terms with the loss of a loved one in such unimaginable and cruel circumstances. Dawn was only 44 years old. She was from Durrington in Wiltshire and she leaves behind two grown-up sons aged 19 and 23 and an 11-year-old daughter, as well as her parents. Our thoughts also remain with Dawn's partner, 45-year-old Charlie, who was also exposed to the nerve agent and remains critically ill in hospital. Both Dawn and Charlie's families, understandably, have asked for the media to respect their privacy at this very difficult time. I would also like to thank all of the extremely brave and dedicated hospital and medical staff who once again have worked tirelessly and tried to save Dawn's life and who continue to care for Charlie. This latest horrendous turn of events has only served to strengthen the resolve of our investigation team as we work to identify those responsible for this outrageous, reckless and barbaric act. The investigation is being led by detectives from the UK's counter-terrorism policing network and they are unable to say at this moment whether or not the nerve agent found in this incident is linked to the attack on Sergei and Yulia Skripal. However, this remains our main line of inquiry. The investigation must be led by the evidence available and the facts alone. Our focus and priority at this time is to identify and locate any container that we believe may be the source of the contamination. In the four months since the Skripals and Nick Bailey were poisoned, no other people besides Dawn and Charlie have presented with symptoms. But their reaction was so severe, it resulted in Dawn's death and Charlie being critically ill. This means they must have got a high dose, and our hypothesis is that they must have handled a container that we are now seeking. Over the weekend, detailed searches have continued at a number of locations in Amesbury and Salisbury. And this activity is centred on Dawn's address at John Baker House, Salisbury, and Charlie's address in Muggleton Road, Amesbury, as well as Queen Elizabeth Gardens in Salisbury. Police cordons are in place at a number of locations in the area and are likely to remain in place for a considerable period of time. This is for the public's safety, as well as to allow officers access to these areas in order to gather crucial evidence for the investigation. Detectives have pieced together a detailed timeline which shows the movements of both Dawn and Charlie in the period before they fell ill on Saturday the 30th of June. And this is crucial to our understanding. And so far we think that on Friday the 29th of June at around 12.20 p.m. they were both together at John Baker House in Salisbury. They then left to visit Salisbury, going to the Queen Elizabeth Gardens that afternoon. They both returned to John Baker House at around 4.20 p.m before catching a bus to Amesbury just after 10pm that night. In the absence of any information to the contrary, we believe they both spent the night at Charlie's address on Muggleton Road. The next morning at 10.15am, Saturday the 30th of June, the South Western Ambulance Service was called to Charlie's address, where Dawn had been taken ill. Charlie was present with her at that time, and Dawn was subsequently taken to hospital. At around midday on Saturday, Charlie visited Boots the Chemist on Stonehenge Walk in Amesbury and he returned to his house about half an hour later. At 1.45pm, he went to the Amesbury Baptist Centre on Butterfield Drive and again returned home at around 3pm. Just over three hours later, at 6.20pm, Charlie was also taken ill. The ambulance service was called back to his address and he too was taken to hospital. As I've said before, there is no evidence that either Dawn or Charlie visited any of the sites that were decontaminated following the attempted murders of Sergei and Yulia Skripal. As the investigation progresses, we continue to build on our understanding of those movements, which is key to us establishing when and where Dawn and Charlie were contaminated. As part of this, detectives have already identified a red Ford Transit van that Charlie travelled in as a passenger on Saturday prior to falling ill and yesterday the military assisted us with transporting that from Amesbury to the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory at Porton Down. There scientists will carry out tests on the vehicle. This is being done as both a precautionary measure and to assist investigators in piecing together the facts behind this dreadful incident. Three other men were also in the van that day and they've been identified and contacted by police. 
None of them are showing any signs of having been exposed to the nerve agent or feeling unwell, and they are being screened as a precaution. I'm sure you will appreciate the investigation is painstaking, meticulous and complex. But can I also assure you we are doing everything possible to gather all available evidence. Officers have already identified and spoken to a number of people who we know were with Dawn and Charlie before they became ill. However, if there is anyone who saw them or met with them or we haven't already spoken to, I would urge them to contact police on 0800 789 321. Their evidence is vital for both public safety and for the investigation. Clearly, everyone Dawn and Charlie were in contact with prior to them falling ill is a focus for the inquiry. The more we know about their exact movements, the better, so please contact us. We continue to work extremely closely with public health and scientific experts to continually monitor and assess the ongoing levels of risk to the public as this investigation progresses. I simply cannot offer any guarantees, but last night public health emphasised that the risk to the general public at this time remains low. I do, however, recognise there will still be people in the local area with concerns, but there is detailed advice available on the Public Health England website. Part of this advice is not to pick up any strange items such as needles, syringes or unusual containers. It's also important to note that whilst 21 other people have presented with concerns, they've all been screened and they've all been given the all clear. I'd like to thank the public for their continued support and patience while this important work continues both in Salisbury and Amesbury. Once again, the people of Wiltshire have shown tremendous stoicism in the face of this tragedy. Wiltshire Police has also established a helpline which can offer further advice and that is on 0800 092 0410. Now I'm afraid a COBRA has been called by the Home Secretary at one o'clock which I will have to attend so I've got a chance to answer a couple of questions if necessary. I'm not in a position to comment on that on an ongoing inquiry, Vikram, as you'd know at this time. I'm satisfied that the investigation is progressing well, but our main line of inquiry now has got to be to determine how Dawn and Charlie came into contact with the agent. Out of course, you said you haven't linked necessarily these uh, two attacks. What would it take to do that? Because most people watching say two novice attacks in the same place are clearly. Well, clearly this is a very rare agent indeed. So, it, as I said, it does remain our main line of inquiry. But we're police officers and we have to work on evidence, so I would need a forensic link to make that absolutely 100% certain. When you say that this is a murder inquiry, again, just to, to clarify, murder would suggest that the people involved have been targeted, whereas the evidence would suggest that this was happenstance. I think Dawn and Charlie, obviously what's happened to them is absolutely terrible, but I think it points to the fact that this was a deadly agent unleashed on British soil and was completely reckless, and that in itself is a reason to launch a murder inquiry. Would you refer to the That's not a matter for me, That'll matter. that will be a matter for Her Majesty's Government and I'm sure will be a focus of COBRA later on. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm sorry, Mike. Can you? That's our working. That, it's a broad spread of time. That's why I'm asking for anybody who knew their exact movements at the time um, to come forward and tell us. We have witnesses. We have people who've been talking to us who understand what their movements were at the time, and they've been incredibly helpful. I'm just saying if there's anyone else who knows anything, then please come forward. Thank you very much. I will need to go. But thank you. Anyway.